But what effect will these few days have on Britain? Will it make us more united, proud of the country? Or is it all an outdated pantomime, shoring up the bad remnants of history? With me now, Danny Sri Skandaraja from the Royal Commonwealth Society and the human rights campaigner Peter Tatchell, who wants Britain to become a republic. And even if you do think that, it's a bit of harmless fun, isn't it, this weekend? Well, like everyone else, it's a great excuse for a party, a celebration. Uh, I wish everyone well on the day. But I would say this point. I've got nothing against the Queen personally, but I do believe the British people should have a right to elect their head of state. It should not be imposed upon us. And, and that's, you know, that's a view you're entitled to, but do you think the Jubilee celebrations are having any bad, bad, bad effect on the country? Or it, it, you accept it's, you know, it's fun to have a party? It's fun to have a party. It's a bit of a distraction from the economic crisis we face, but you know, we all need diversions and a bit of fun every now and then. What I would say is that I find it sad that people seek to uh, find their national identity through one particularly very rich and privileged family who have inherited public office, not on the basis of merit or character or election, but through the fact that they're born into a particular family. I think there's many good things about Britishness that are worth celebrating, like the extraordinary contribution of our British scientists and inventors to human civilization. And in particular, I would contrast these celebrations to the much lower key but more worthy celebrations on the 60th anniversary of victory in Europe. Right. That, okay. The Queen has never, no disrespect to the Queen, but she's not made any great personal sacrifices. She's never risked her life, but millions of British people did during the Second oh, World right. War. And by comparison, the 60th anniversary of VE Day was very low key. Da Danny Shishkandaraja, I mean, is this good for Britain? Is it going to have any lasting impact on Britain, or is it all fleeting? I certainly hope so. I think economically we know that. Uh, you know, the markets react to public mood and perception. And, you know, after a very difficult period, I think the country needs something to sort of must, uh, to rally around. Well, you're saying this is going to be good for the economy? Well, I think it's certainly in terms of motivating people, whether it's about just, you know, letting their hair down, wor not worrying about the uh, distraction of, of economic woes, it'll be good. Um, even on, on a matter about uniting the nation, you know, research suggests that Britain has particularly weak um, symbols that can link people, can unite people, you know, compared to you know, fervor, fervoristic sort of nationalism in America, um, Britain lacks that. And I think it's moments like this that can unite a nation. But isn't it also true that although they might, they might be a minority, and we don't really have reliable statistics, there's a whole bunch of people in this country who feel nothing for this. <laughs> You know, and, and who are completely alienated by it, really. Sure, fine, and there'll always be that. But look, just yesterday, one of the first Jubilee lunches that took place was organised by the Refugee Council in South London, where refugees who'd been granted refugee status in this country came together and organised a big Jubilee lunch to say thank you to, for, for, to Britain and to the Queen, I suppose, for welcoming them. You know, to me, that's a powerful symbol, a powerful way of, of, of using the Jubilee of the to unite a country. I mean, isn't the truth that, I mean, you've lost the argument. Um, because the show of support that's out there, the bunting that's on all the streets, the street parties, um, you've made no headway. Well, I think the truth is that people do love a celebration and a party and a bank holiday. That's great. And I wish everybody well. But the support for an elected head of state has been more or less static at about 20 to 30 percent for decades. Um, yes, we have a way to go to win those arguments, but I think the democratic principle is so important. The idea that one person, through their mere birth inheritance, can hold the highest public office in the country, that's not compatible with democratic values. But this is values. the trouble with your argument, though, isn't it? Because you, if, unless you can really demonstrate that this is bad for Britain, why would anybody really want to change the system, especially for an elected politician? Well, I, I, I look at the example of Ireland. I know it's not very fashionable for British people to look to Ireland as an example, but we've, they've had two recent presidents, Mary Robinson and Mary McAleish, who were democratically elected and who reached out to all sections of Irish society in the way that our Queen has not. For example, both those presidents made explicit attempts to visit and embrace the lesbian and gay communities of Ireland and black and ethnic minority communities. Our Queen has not done that kind of embrace. Danny, why, why is the hereditary principle a good thing for Britain? I mean, what, what is the message this is sending out in 2012? Well, I think there's a... Well, Peter's point around popular support um, suggests that, you know, there, no matter what experts, constitutional experts, demo, democratic activists might think, the vast majority of British people are happy with the system as it is, and I think we'd be foolish to mess with the system that, that people seem to be happy with. But, but uh, can you make a positive argument for, you know, for why it's a good thing? 
Well, it's a thing that seems to work. I mean, there's a lot about this country which is unwritten, which is hereditary, but it seems to work, and that's the beauty of British democracy, I think. But that's a bit of a shrug of the shoulders, isn't it? Sort of people can't be bothered to change. Well, not necessarily. And they quite like the Queen. No, I think we know that there is no system of governance that's perfect. And the, the point about the British system is it seems to, to carry on and work reasonably well. So, so why so, mess with it? So, so Peter Tatchell, I mean, you, you sound like as though you, you'd be dismayed if there were demonstrations or anything like that this weekend. Well, I will be it's, there. It's inappropriate, is it? Would no, it I, I'll be there with Republic, the campaign pressure group for elected head of state, by City Hall from 1 to 5 p.m. We'll not be disrupting anybody's fun. We'll not be, you know, interfering or being insulting in any way. We're just going to make our silent, uh, low-key protest to say that we want the right of the British people to choose who was our head of state. I think it's very offensive. I know it's not intentional, but under the present system, no black or Asian person can ever be a British head of state because at the moment, that post is reserved for the all-white Windsor family. Now, I find that very, very offensive. I know it's not the intention, but I find it very well, nobody offensive. Nobody else can be head of state. I, I, that's, I find, that's a ridiculous point. I, well, I find <laughs> it very offensive that, that, that black and Asian people of, of character, merit and integrity can never be up in a state. For example, we've got Obama. Everybody praises okay. an African-American president, but we couldn't have right. an African-British Af 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 person as our head of state. On that, thank you both very much indeed. Danish Skandaraja, Peter Tatchell.